thank you very much, um, professors, uh, ministers, other dignitaries present here today. It's my great pleasure to be part of this project. I very much appreciate the possibility to participate and contribute. It's very important, um, I think, a goal that we have set for us. And I would like to say that I am a professor of international law. Therefore, I would like to share with you also some thoughts that are perhaps connecting the international legal dimension with the constitutional one. And I would like to start with something that uh, relates to our um, keynote address at the beginning because um, unfortunately the world is not on the target to achieve uh, the sustainable de development goals that were set in 2015 and it was not on a target to get there even prior to COVID-19. Poverty, malnutrition, uh, discrimination, inequalities are increasing. The um, greenhouse gas emissions are spiraling upwards, while biodiversity is actually spiraling downwards. And pollution and toxic substances are actually causing uh, more than 9 million premature deaths annually, while, of course, harming health of billions of people worldwide. And the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said in 2021 progress report on SDGs, the humanity needs a decade of truly transformative action that delivers for people and planet. And this transformative action, I think, should be the red line of all our work, including in this project, where we are looking at, of course, constitutional frameworks, but at the same time, we should be looking at what transformative action can be adopted within this constitutional framework in order to try to get close, let's say, to the goal that was set in 2015. Now, Slovenian constitution um, posits international law immediately after the constitution, so hierarchically there will be constitution, treaties and other general principles of international law that will prevail over any other legislation adopted in Slovenia. And I'm mentioning this because the principles of sustainable development, the precautionary principle, preventative principle, and all of these environmental principles have to be taken into account when Slovenian courts are interpreting relevant provisions, both from the constitution as well as uh, other um, legal acts that are adopted. Now, the Slovenian constitutional system is basically composed of that was adopted in 1991 and regulations of constitutional nature. And while we have, of course, uh, um, a rather straightforward and simple provisions in our constitution, contrary to what we heard from our colleague, in Slo uh, the situation is in Slovakia, uh, the constitutional court significantly contributes to the normative development through its jurisprudence in environmental matters. So, the basic provisions uh, have been broadened in two ways in the practice of the Constitutional Court. First, through a very broad application of the notion of a right, of human right. So regardless of where a particular article is placed, in which chapter of the Constitution, the Court has interpreted it as uh, containing a fundamental right, and that goes <coughs> also for the right of healthy living environment and the other sense that the rights themselves are interpreted very broadly and I will explain what is meant by that. So the constitutional provision that is most important for our project is um, contained in Article 72 of Slovenian Constitution, it's the right to a healthy living environment and right at the beginning of our project we received this question what does this living environment refer to because it's um, not a usual phrasing and I have to mention that now more than 80% of all countries in the world have included the right to living safe, living or not living or other forms of environment in their constitutions. So more around 160 states uh, that are members of the United Nations have now this provision in their constitutions. Uh, so it's important also to look at, the, at this uh, comparative perspective of what the contents of this right is in different uh, orders. So the living 
seems to be a <laughs> accidental uh, word that was added to the Constitution because here I'm coming to a very broad interpretation of the Constitutional Court because when the Court dealt with the right to a healthy living environment, it applied it both to situations where it was considering work environment of workers <laughs> in their working spaces as well as when it was dealing with biodiversity, with taking of bears and wolves from their natural environment, as well as when it was uh, dealing with uh, danger rising out of nuclear or other hazardous wastes. So it was really applied very broadly and interpreted very broadly. More importantly, perhaps, is um, the fact that although the right to healthy living environment was placed in the chapter on economic and social relations, the Constitutional Court clarified that this uh, article actually contains a fundamental human right, regardless of the fact that it was not included in the chapter that deals with fundamental uh, human rights. I forgot to measure my time so that I'm not uh, going to speak for too long, so I started now. Um, and what I think also can be um, important for our project and our discussions is that although this uh, provision that you can read seems to be of a very declaratory nature, it has been really interpreted and uh, very broadly, as I mentioned, by the Constitutional Court. So, uh, although a very brief, a very short provision, although referring to important principles, as you can see from the text, for example, the um, paragraph um, three also contains the Brutal Pace principle, um, it has really gained a lot of additional normative contents through the jurisprudence of the Constitutional Court of Slovenia. Now, the Article 7 <coughs> of the Constitution has been interpreted also in connection to other rights that are contained in the Slovenian Constitution. For example, also in relation to the right to life uh, from Article 17, uh, right to health, and in all this case law, the Constitutional Court has always um, strived to find the right balance, so the balancing exercise where on the one hand, for example, it was pursuing the right to free economic initiative and on the other hand, protecting the right to healthy living environment. So there really uh, is and it will, is included, and I don't have the time to go um, in depth to all the cases, a lot of jurisprudence that I think is of um, interest, would be of interest for our project on this right. But allow me to also very briefly mention another constitutional provision um, of Slovenia's constitution, that is Article 70A, which was added to our constitution and uh, entered into force in 2016, so rather recent addition to the constitution, which specifically protects the right to drinking water. So um, there is a lot of discussion whether perhaps this right is already included in the right to health, for example, or the uh, right to adequate uh, housing, also perhaps, and the right to life, even in some uh, jurisprudences, also the international bodies. However, in Slovenia, there was a very strong push, also from the civil society, that there needs to be a constitutional provision protecting specifically also the natural resources containing uh, safe drinking water. And this is how this right was included in the Constitution. And uh, as you can see, um, the water resources are considered as a public good. And there's, this is a very explicit uh, provision because you can't see any such um, qualification in Article 72, which deals with the environment, what the environment actually constitutes. And for jurisprudence, we see that environment is considered by the court as a public interest, public good, a value, so different kind of qualifications of what the environment constitutes. But when it comes to water, it says it's a public good managed by the state. And probably since water is part of the environment, we could ascribe a similar, similar qualification to other parts of the environment as well. And um, nevertheless, um, the provision of uh, water to the population, so the supply of water to the population um, must be um, secured uh, through 
self-governing local communities on a not-for-profit basis. Now, this provision, of course, um, raises a lot of questions and issues and hasn't yet been fully implemented in practice. Uh, there have been recently also some decisions on um, violations of uh, this provision because some local um, communities um, have a difference of opinion on how the local uh, communities should ensure this provision of water to the population living in their territory. Some believe that since they have constructed their own wells to actually uh, have access to the water, they are the only ones who have uh, the right to use this drinking water, but of course, on the other hand, the part of the population that has no direct access to safe drinking water under this constitutional provision is entitled to get one through the uh, direct action of these um, self-governing local uh, communities' administrations. And uh, there have been decisions that have put an obligation now to these uh, bodies, rather than bodies, of these communities to ensure such access. And when we're speaking about drinking water here, I think it's very important to connect this back to the basic principles that I was speaking earlier, speaking about earlier, especially Article 8 of the Slovenia's Constitution, which says that all the treaties and principles prevail over any legislation, because the, same, um, the drinking water does not only mean access to potable water, but in fact means the access to safe drinking water, the water that does not endanger um, the health of the individuals, uh, meaning that only access to contaminated some water, but perhaps uh, still considered by um, the authorities generally as uh, sufficient in light of this provision, might constitute a violation of uh, individuals rights because it has to be assessed from the perspective of the effects on the individual's health. And this is in accordance with also international jurisprudence of various um, uh, bodies, including, for example, the um, uh, treaty -based, human rights treaty-based bodies, which have further elaborated this uh, right to drinking water. The proper implementation of this right in Slovenia, as I said, is still in progress, so not all the necessary laws and uh, regulations have yet been adopted. In particular, the problem with uh, access to this right uh, of Roma population remains in Slovenia. Mm, there was one important judgment of the European Court of Human Rights um, in uh, last year, Udorovic and others versus Slovenia, where the European Court of Human Rights did not found, find Slovenia to be in violation of the European Convention. Nevertheless, it emphasized that Slovenia does have a duty to ensure access to water to all the population on its territory, including uh, to these Roma uh, families that were um, complainants in this case. The reason the court found no violation was that it felt that the applicants did not sufficiently substantiate uh, their case and did not provide evidence that their lack of access to water impaired their uh, health, I mean, family life, as they were arguing, or that they were subject to discrimination under the European Convention of Human Rights. Now, there are other relevant provisions in our Constitution that I would just like to mention, because I don't have time to go more into the substance of them. Uh, first, the positive obligation on the part of the state to care for the conservation of natural wealth. This article has been many times in the court jurisprudence interpreted jointly with Article 72 and uh, actually reinforcing each other, so it's an interesting jurisprudence on that. Then we have Article 67, which determines a little bit more the substance of the right to property, and Professor Euhart will perhaps elaborate a bit more on that. Uh, Article 70, that regulates public good and natural resources, and I mentioned before the, the link of public good with water and perhaps then also environment in this article. Protection of land and also natural resources and cultural heritage that are protected in Article 73. Now, because there has been also some discussion in our group whether there is a specific institution at the 
let's say, highest level of authority that would specifically look into the issues of the environment. Uh, I want to mention Article 159, especially Paragraph 2 of our Constitution, which provides that a special ombudsman for the rights of citizens may also be established by law for particular fields. So there is, if we can see, there is an opportunity that perhaps maybe a new government that is to take power next week will um, look into this possibility to establish a specialized ombudsperson, as we have here, uh, to develop uh, this, this area a little bit further. I think this would be a very important and progressive step to take, so I would definitely recommend that. And I would also like to just say that despite the fact that our constitution does not mention explicitly in the text future generations, it does not specifically, um, has included this in any of the provisions, the jurisprudence that does occasionally also refer to future generations when interpreting and applying Article 72. So there have been judgments and also some separate opinions of judges where they have further elaborated that, of course, there has to be the right balancing uh, between the various interests, economic interests, especially in the protection of environment, keeping in mind also the rights of future generations. So there is a language to be found in jurisprudence, despite the fact that it is not explicitly featuring in the text of our constitution. And because I'm over time, I just want to very quickly mention one last thing, and that is that if you observe the entire jurisprudence of the Slovenia's constitutional court on all the rights connected to the environment, we could detect somehow three different periods, so to say. Initially, when the constitution was adopted, there seemed to be a lot of openness of the court to decide on issues having to do with environmental rights. But then when the court started uh, facing a problem of a huge backlog, because a lot of cases in Slovenia can come before the constitutional court, we can detect some more restrictive approach towards uh, granting petitioners standing to seek um, the remedies for the alleged violations of the right to health, of the right to health living environment. So especially the civil society organizations have difficulties to demonstrate that they have the necessary legal standing. Recently, however, we are witnessing again a new era, I hope a very positive, new, more uh, open area, era to uh, dealing with environmental issues. So again, in recent decisions, we can see more um, interest or more understanding for a more also internationally, speaking of internationally, taking into account all the international developments, understanding of how this right to health and living environment should be interpreted and therefore also more willingness to grant the standing for the civil society organizations to bring such cases. Thank you very much for your attention.